Well, you guys, today we take a look at some of the things you should do after installing Windows 11. These are just my personal opinion because Windows 11 is super bloated and there's loads of stuff in here that I don't actually need. Now, I've shown people this program before, but I never actually covered exactly how to use it. So I want to show you this uh, program first and then I'll show you some other things you can do yourself. So first off, open up the Microsoft Store and type in here WinToys. And basically, once you open this up, you can click on Get and install it onto your computer. This is the first piece of software you can use to optimize Windows 11 and turn off a lot of stuff that you don't need. And it saves a lot of time rather than going through this manually. So first off, open up the program and you should be ready to start using the application. Now, before we do this, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. Now, if you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 Pro or cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM key, then check out the links in the video description, create yourself an account. And once you've done that, you can use my promo code, capital B, capital R, 09, and apply this to your order, and you will get a 30% discount on all of your purchases on CD Key Sales. Once you've done that, choose PayPal and they will send you your key and you can then activate your version of Windows or even upgrade from Windows Home to Windows 11 or Windows 10 Pro. Okay, so back to the actual tutorial here. We've got the program installed and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off just seeing this little tutorial here where it just goes through and shows you exactly what this application does. It's a non-destructive uh, program which you can use to toggle off a lot of settings that you would have to manually go to these locations and turn off. So on the burger bar up on the top left hand side, we're gonna start off with apps and you can go through here and uninstall a lot of pre-installed applications on the operating system that you don't need. There's tons of them here and what this application allows you to do is uninstall apps that don't normally allow you to uninstall. So you can go ahead and find apps on here like Maps and uh, maybe you don't need a camera or maybe you don't need uh, the snipping tool or quick assist or things like that. And you can just go ahead and click on the three dots on the right and click uninstall and it will basically uninstall these from the computer. This will heavily reduce all of the bloat that is pre-installed on Windows 11 now, only install the stuff that you really are not going to use, and this way it will make space for programs that you do actually want to use. So I'm going to go through here and remove a lot of this stuff that keeps being added to Windows 11. Here's another one, Power Automate. That's another one that's been just recently added. And again, if you don't use this stuff, then just remove it. It's that simple. So let's move on to the next tab, which is going to be Services. I'll come back and remove all this stuff and show you at the end. So we're going to go on to services here now. So click on the services tab and this will allow you to disable services that you don't want. It tells you which services are running. It makes it a little bit easier to see some of the ones that you may want to uh, stop or disable. And again, there's some uh, tracking ones in here and also some telemetry ones like this one here. You can click the three dots and stop this and you can also click mode and put it to disable if you wish and it will turn this off. Let me show you. So that's how you stop a natural service. And uh, if you want to disable a service, all you need to do here is go find one you want to disable. And uh, it's not like the old days where there was tons of services that you can turn off. Basically, there's not much to turn off nowadays. So click the three dots, hit mode, and click disable, and it will disable that service. Now, when you reboot the PC, it says it's running right now. It will basically stop that running because you've disabled it, but you will need to reboot the PC. Again, this is going to come down to personal preference. Some people might use, say, weather and want the geolocation service enabled so it knows exactly where you are and it can tell you the weather in your location. If you don't like the geolocation service, then just disable it. It's that simple. You can go through here and take a look at some of these and it will tell you exactly what they are and you can turn them off. If you don't have a printer and you don't use a printer, you can disable the print spooler. There's also been known issues with print spooler being enabled with uh, backdoors and other sorts of problems that Microsoft have had to deal with in the past. So you can turn that off if you don't use it. And again, there's some other stuff in here. 
So just disable the ones that you don't need. Let's move on to the next tab, which is going to be the boost tab. Inside here, there's going to be a bunch of settings which you can toggle on or off. And some of these are going to be uh, useful for some people rather than opening up command prompts and things like that, like the ultimate performance power plan. You can just toggle this on, open this up, and it will show you that you're using the ultimate performance plan. Instead of using balanced or any one of those other settings that you can use, it means you're going to be drawing more power because it's going to deliver more power to the computer. And basically, ultimate performance is the term there. So let's go ahead and look at Cortana here. I'm going to turn this off under startup apps. And there's some other stuff in here which you can toggle on or off depending on how you want to use your PC. Some people might want to use OneDrive and they might not want to uh, disable OneDrive or turn it off or uninstall it. It just depends on the individual. So just work out what you don't need and then just remove the rest if you don't want it. So moving on uh, to, we've got down the bottom here, restartable apps and background apps. Now, obviously, background apps means that these apps will be running in the background and taking up system resources. And if you've got an older PC, it's going to use a lot of system resources that you might not have available to you because maybe you don't have a lot of RAM or maybe uh, you've got an older CPU and things like that. So you might want to turn all of that stuff off. The search indexing, you can turn off or turn on, depending on whether you use Windows Search and stuff like that will determine whether you want to use that again. Under the Health tab, we can come down here. You can see File Startup is grayed out here. We've got Drive Optimization, Storage Sense. If you want to turn Storage Sense off, you can do. If you want to leave it on and let it run in the background and, and remove stuff whenever you uh, want to, uh, it, Storage Sense is there. Again, Cleanup is another area. You've got your repair tools there as well. Windows Updates, you can set to either Security Manually or Disabled. If you want to leave them as default, you can leave it on default. Some people just want to receive security updates and they don't want to receive feature updates, which are changes to the operating system, which can uh, bring a lot of bugs with it. So depending on how you want to set up it, that's uh, down to the individual. Moving on to tweaks here, you've got desktop here. Again, you can show recycle bin and show this PC and a bunch of little settings here, which you can either toggle on or toggle off. You can use the classic context menu as well which is i prefer to use that rather than the uh, abomination that windows have released with their particular context menu there's bunches of other stuff in here which you can mess around with i'm going to go through here and turn off some of this stuff that i don't need and we can then move on to the next thing okay so let's move on uh, to some more steps that you can take so that was the wind toys and you can use that to basically remove a lot of stuff that you don't want and turn off a lot of settings. Also in the settings pane, you can do some stuff manually, like toggle off the uh, Copilot preview if you don't want it. Also turn off widgets. If you're not gonna be using the widgets, you can turn all of this stuff off. You can just show the icon for your search to make that nice and small and compact. Again, you can go in here and make the changes that you want manually. And you, unfortunately, with Windows 11, where it comes bundled with so much stuff, you have to do a lot of changes to get it the way you want. And there is tons of settings in here that you can just mess around with. I'm not going to go through everything inside the settings pane because I have covered this before and I don't want to be repeating myself. But privacy and security is another key area where you can turn off a lot of this, uh, my advertising ID and stuff like that. So it stops pop-up ads from Microsoft and things like that. Location and all these other ones here. Camera, if you don't use these. You can use group policies to turn all of this stuff off. I'll quickly show you where to do that in the group policy so you'll know. I'm not going to cover too much in there because, again, I have covered that before. But you can clear all this information out, location, and lock this down in group policy so it makes it a little bit more easier. All of this stuff down here, pretty much I'll turn all of this off. And you would have to go through here and turn the rocker buttons on and off, depending on uh, whether you want them on or off on your system. Notifications, I don't want any of those, so I turn all that stuff off. And again, it just takes time. So manually, you can turn all this off, but I'll show you where to do it inside group policy as well. So type search and put in there GPO and open up the group policy editor. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole of these settings because I've turned off a lot of stuff in group policy editor on my system and there is tons of settings that you can go through in here 
and this would make the video obviously very very long if you want to see a complete video on this then let me know in the comment section below and i'll show you my system where i've turned off a ton of stuff which makes things a lot more smoother and more zippy with uh, the operating system inside the application area here where it says app privacy in the windows components section under computer configuration here you, what you need to do is go into this section it will tell you what to do down here but i'll quickly show you and you'll get an idea so go into enable and on the drop down here just put this to force deny and apply this and it's telling uh you know your system that you don't want to participate in any of this stuff so you're going to enable that feature and force deny it and it won't send any information back and it will be turned off permanently uh, and even if windows updates your system all this will be turned off there is a microphone setting on here i've left but all the others i've enabled and i've turned them off let me show you what that actually does so you can see in real time so once you go here and you go down to this section down here you can click on one of these and now you can see some of these settings are managed by your organization that is your group policies that we've set here and they are now all turned off and they're grayed out and you can't toggle them back on that just makes life so much easier turn all that stuff off and there's loads of other stuff in the group policy check out some of my older videos and you'll uh, be able to have your system running really nice and smooth if you want to see an optimization a real full video on this it will take some time probably about an hour but i will make a video showing you and i'll go through every single step and every single thing that you can do and i do on my system to make it run a lot better i'm just going to uninstall all of these which are apps that aren't really installed they're sort of ready to be installed and you just clutter up the start menu and i'm not going to go on about the start menu because i don't like this start menu whatsoever and i do change it with start 11 and i'll quickly show you that but there's some stuff in here now which you can remove if you don't want any of this stuff so if you want to get rid of these and then by all means go in there and remove them and you can use the app section and i'll quickly go in and remove the rest of this and I'll get back to you after I've done it. Okay, so I've turned all of those off now. And if you look at the start menu now and go to the app section, you'll see there's a lot of stuff that's been removed here. There's hardly anything inside here. You can remove whatever you want from there, like calculator and alarms and clocks. If you don't want any of that sort of stuff, you can uninstall all that as well. But I just leave a bare minimum in there. Okay, so that's now done. And obviously, we've got this recommended section down here and a bunch of other things that you can do with the start menu. To make it a bit more usable uh, personally i would change it out with start 11 but i'll quickly show you uh, some of the other things that you can do okay so let's quickly address this uh, start menu here first and we'll go to personalization go start and you can make changes to your start menu here if you want to turn off the show recently added apps and some other settings like for instance tips shortcuts and uh things like that you can turn all that stuff off and once you've done that that will gray out that bottom area there like so and again it's just a massive big start menu with no sort of usability to it so if you want to change that i'll show you that at the very end so next up what you can do here is we're going to run another tool which i'll quickly show you now there's loads of other tools that you can run there's uh you know shut up 10 which uh, chris titus text tool actually uses as well built into it and you can see the processes here uh, there's 129 running some people want to get that down as low as possible the memory settings here i will show you these here before we run the actual tool and you'll see a difference after we run it so you'll basically know exactly what we're doing here all we need to do is head over to his website and copy that code someone's in our discord server and didn't know how to run it all you need to do is copy the code and right click on the start menu and run terminal as admin and then paste that code in and all it does is it goes to his website and downloads the actual application and you will then see the program open up here now you can install a bunch of programs if you want to do that but we're here for the tweaks and the config here so you can go in here and toggle on what you want dark mode if you want to use it here yes you can turn that on inside windows there's also uh, some of the tweaks that it uses like it disables uh, telemetry and other things and it's also going to use shut up 10 which is basically the main bulk of this program which is going to disable a lot of stuff and you can turn that feature on and off you can reset it through this tool as well 
So you can go back to defaults if you want to. If you don't want to use this method, you can go straight away and use uh, shut up 10 if you wish, or you can just leave this part out if you're not that interested in going an extra mile and removing all of the other bloat from Windows. So whether you're on desktop or laptop, up the top, you would choose that and then run the tweaks and it will go ahead and apply all those. For some reason, it's turned on our widget down there. So I'll go and uh, turn that off, but it's re-enabled the widget there, which I will need to re-toggle that off. I'm not sure why that's re-enabled itself. So inside the config area here, uh, you can also set up uh, updates here like you could in the other program, WinToys. Okay, so I quickly restarted the system and now you can see Task Manager here. If this is important to you, then obviously that tool will help removing a lot of the processes. You can see that's been reduced down to 81. Again, when you start installing stuff, that's going to start climbing up again. There's the memory shot there, so you can check the before and after. Okay, so that is uh, those settings there changed. Now, if you want to tweak this a little bit further, you can do with by changing the start menu, like I've said, and you can use start 11, the version two. This is a brand new version. Get that installed on the system. It's only a few bucks and it's going to make Windows much more usable in my personal opinion. Now, I'm not going to touch on this too much because I have covered it before, but some people ask about the actual groups here. And these are on the actual menu. So I've now aligned everything to the left-hand side here. And I've also now changed the color. And you can add little color groups here. And you can make these your games, your tools, uh, whatever it is you want to make yours into productivity and things like that. And categorize everything and have it in little tabs on the main uh, screen here on your little start menu. And this makes the start menu much more usable. In my personal opinion, this is what Windows 11 should have been when they released it. And you can see we've got a much more usable start menu right here with Start 11 version 2. So you can change these tabs. You can add extra group tabs as well, which will add another tab here. And you can rename that to whatever you like and put all your little apps in there, which makes them quick and easy to gain access to. And you can change that color as well. You can have different color Rather than dark here, you can have these set to blue or whatever it want. You can set the transparency on the taskbar, uh, make the icon smaller uh, and things like that. There's loads of stuff you can do with uh, Start 11. Uh, so if you're into that sort of thing and you want a better start menu, then that is the way uh, to actually go with Windows 11, in my personal opinion. And it will just make it so much more usable and easier to use. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. There is quite a few other things you can do, like other settings, which I've not added in here. If you want to see a complete whole video from start to finish, which will probably take about an hour odd, then let me know in the comment section below. I'll be happy to make that video for you. And I'll, I'll try and add in every single uh, type of tweak that you can do that makes Windows a lot better and makes it better for gamers and also just for general use and also for people that are using older PC hardware. Now, by doing these particular tweaks, it just makes Windows 11 much more usable. And obviously, this is the way I think Windows 11 should have been when they released it and shouldn't have had all of the bloat and all of the rubbish that comes pre-installed on all of the settings. One of the biggest flaws of Windows 11 is the amount of clicks it takes to get to locations. It's like added an extra two or three clicks on, which used to just take one or two clicks and is about three or four clicks for each thing there. And they've buried it so deep in the operating system that people just get confused where they used to go to control panel, and everything was there, and now they're going around, rooting around the PC, trying to find settings that used to be easier to find. Anyway, with that said, I think I'm starting to waffle now. I'm going to finish this one off. If you want to see more of this sort of stuff, let me know in the comment section below and I'll be happy to make those videos for you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Have a lovely weekend and I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.